I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome to another episode. If you do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Last time we were shooting some pool, and this time we're battling Pokemon again. Game number 44, Pokemon Stadium. Released in 2000, this game was developed and published by Nintendo. So, wow, we already have the sequel to the Japanese exclusive Pocket Monster Stadium. In Japan, this game is known as Pokemon Stadium 2, but to most of y'all, this is the original. This is very similar to the original Pocket Monster Stadium we covered in a previous video, so for the basics of how battles work, I'll refer you to that video, which is linked in the description below. So in this game, we can activate the credits by beating both the entire Gym Leader Castle as well as all cups in the stadium, and then finally defeating Mewtwo. So that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. Unlike the previous game, this one has all Pokemon available in it, even as a rental. The only ones you can't have are Mew and Mewtwo, although you can get them if you import it from your Game Boy. You may think this makes it much harder to pick a great team, but in reality, this is still Gen 1, so the good Pokemon will be similar to before. The first team I came up with was Gyarados, Electrode, Nidoking, Jolteon, Starmie, and Haunter. You might wonder why I would pick Haunter over Gengar, and that's because of the moveset. Gengar has horrible moves to try to balance things out, and Haunter knows Psychic, which is just a very strong move. I went for the Gem Leader Castle first, which is a series of challenges where you have to beat 8 gems in a row, with 4 trainers each. If you lose once, you go back to the beginning of that gem. 8 gems relating to the 8 gems in the Generation 1 Pokemon games. First gem is Brock, and we've got to get through 3 random trainers first. They were an absolute pushover. One thing I learned is Electrode isn't as strong this time around as before because now there's just other options that are better. So then I made my way to Brock himself. He sent out Cubone, Kabuto, and Onix against my Gyarados. Yeah, Gyarados absolutely destroyed this team. The animation for Hydro Pump is kind of underwhelming, honestly. It was this crazy massive thing in the Game Boy games, but now it's just one single burst of water. Anyway, first gem down. Gem 2 is Misty, you know, with all those water Pokemon making a big old mess. But first, like usual, we gotta fight three random trainers before we can take her on. One thing to mention is the animations during battle. There are robust 3D animations for all 151 Pokemon being sent out. Each of their possible attacks, when they take damage, have status effects on them, fainting, and probably other things I'm missing. It's honestly incredibly impressive with the technology that was available at the time. Anyway, the regular trainers got wrecked, and it was on to Misty. Literally all of her Pokemon were water types, so Jolteon and Starmie were just perfect since they both knew Thunder and Thunderbolt. She didn't stand a chance, and another gem was down. Next up was Lieutenant Surge. Here I ran into my first issue with this team. His entire party is full of electric types. Nidoking was a great choice here knowing Earthquake, but the rest was kind of iffy. Moltres, Gyarados, and Starmie were all poor choices, but Jolteon wasn't great either. I ended up bringing Nidoking, Haunter, and Moltres. Right off the bat, Electrode used self-destruct to bring my Nidoking down to very low HP. This was not good. Earthquake took it down in one hit, then out came Magneton. I was faster, but somehow it lived through Earthquake, and it also randomly knew Hyper Beam? Not cool, dude. Haunter took it down without any damage, then out came Surge's signature Raichu, except this one was special. It knew Surf! There's actually a way to teach Pikachu Surf by 100%ing this game, I believe, so I guess it makes sense. Unfortunately for me, that took Moltres down easily. The team needed refining. Moltres was definitely the weak point, so I decided to sub in Graveler instead. It knew way better moves than Golem. I sent out Graveler first because surely it destroys all these electric types, right? Well, not exactly. That stupid Raichu knows Surf and it killed it in one hit. Like, come on, dude. Thankfully, it didn't kill Nidoking in one hit and we killed Magneton in one shot this time. But then, this time he sent out Pikachu as well, who also knows Surf. Somehow, Nidoking stayed alive with 2 HP and that was it. Lieutenant Surge was done. Gem 4 is Erika, the Grass Trainer. In this game, they have an announcer during battles, just like in Pocket Monster Stadium, but this time it's all in English. If you played this game back in the day, you definitely remember this guy's voice for famous lines like these. Savage attack! The savage hit! And there goes the battle! Taken down on the word show! 
given how generally poor video game voice acting was back then, this is top tier commentary. It's really good. Erica has all grass type Pokemon, so Moltres is just amazing against her. She sent out Weepin' Bell first, and this just showed me the most obnoxious strategy in all of Pokemon in my opinion. My Fire Blast missed and it paralyzed me with Stun Spore. Then it used Wrap. See, Wrap does low damage, but it prevents your Pokemon from being able to do anything until it ends after 3 to 5 turns. And since I'm paralyzed, I will always go second, so it can just use Wrap again once it ends. Basically, it catches you in an infinite loop with no hope unless Wrap misses, but even then you have a 50% chance to not attack due to paralysis. Thankfully, Haunter is ghost type, so Wrap can't hit it since it's a normal type move. Haunter destroyed her entire team with Psychic and Erica was done for. Gym 5 is Koga, the poison trainer. Psychic is super effective against poison, so Haunter absolutely annihilated all of his team, like it wasn't even slightly close. Gem 6 is Sabrina, the Psychic Trainer. Psychic is insanely powerful in Gen 1, so this one was kinda scary. I knew my team needed some work here, so I changed it up a bit. I swapped out Moltres, Haunter, and Starmie for Chansey, Aerodactyl, and Kadabra. Chansey has high special and very high HP, so it can tank all the Psychic moves. Aerodactyl will be faster than Alakazam and does well against them, and Kadabra's just a solid Pokemon. I sent out Chansey to start, and she sent out Kadabra. Chansey made quick work of him, then she sent out Alakazam. It used Toxic against me, which is kind of a counter to Chansey since the poison builds up over time. Then Alakazam used Dig, so I swapped to Aerodactyl. Dig can't hit me, so it seemed like an easy win. But then it's Psybeam got the low, low chance of confusing me. The last Pokemon she had was Mr. Mime, and Aerodactyl unfortunately killed itself. I tried using Jolteon to take him down, but I was paralyzed and got bad luck. Chansey was my last hope. It came down to the final hit, but thankfully Ice Beam took him down before I died of poison. Honestly, way closer than I would have liked it to be. Gem 7 is Blaine, the Fire Trainer. I brought back the original team here, except I swapped in Golem for Moltres. I took Starmie, Golem, and Gyarados against his Charizard, Kangaskhan, and Rapidash. There wasn't much he could do since my team countered his so heavily, but it was closer than I would have thought. Then the 8th and final gem leader is Giovanni, the ground trainer. I kept mostly the same team here, but I brought Aerodactyl and Exeggutor instead of Moltres and Starmie. Haunter did good work against his Tauros, then against Persian right after. Gyarados spamming takedown to clean up the Persian followed by the Nidoqueen, and that was it. All 8 gems defeated. But the gem leader castle doesn't stop there. You then have to beat the Elite Four, the toughest challenge there is in the Pokemon games. Here I have to defeat five trainers, all consecutively without losing once, and all of them are really strong. No random weak trainers like there were in the gyms. There's Lorelei, the Ice Trainer, Bruno, the Fighting Trainer, Agatha, the Ghost Trainer, Lance, the Dragon Trainer, and finally our rival. You need a really well-rounded team because you can't just stack the team against one type this time around. My first go I went with Jolteon, Gyarados, Haunter, Nidoking, Chansey, and Rhydon. Lorelei has Ice Pokemon, but in Gen 1 most Ice Pokemon are also Water type, so Jolteon absolutely annihilates this team. Then came Bruno. His team's a mix of fighting and rock type Pokemon. Gyarados destroys the rock types and does decent against fighting, but Haunter also destroys the fighting type. It wasn't too close, and then I was on to Agatha. This one started pretty well, my Rhydon against her Gengar. However, it immediately confused me, which that was bad. My move here is to use Dig, which takes two turns, so I needed to pass two RNG confusion checks to hit. She swapped to Arbok and thankfully I did get past the confusion and killed it in one hit. Then came out Venusaur. Why does the Ghost Trainer have a Venusaur anyway? I swapped to Chansey who knows Ice Beam and made quick work of it. So then I had all my Pokemon against her Gengar. Chansey didn't stand a chance and got absolutely wrecked. So I sent out Haunter whose Psychic does good work but Gengar's Psychic is even better. All I had left was Rhydon who knew Dig super effective against Gengar so it should be good. However, I got confused and hurt myself, but thankfully Gengar used Bide for some reason, so I got another dig off and won. My goodness. Also, why does Gengar have giant teeth? It's pretty creepy. So wow, I made it to the last Elite Four trainer on my very first try. Just Lance to go before the final fight. I started with Jolteon against his Lapras, an amazing match for me. Well, it should have been. I missed Thunder twice in a row and Lapras got a crit with Blizzard. 
Unbelievable, dude. Like, come on. Haunter finished it off quick with Thunderbolt, and then out came Charizard. And wouldn't you know it, he crit with Flamethrower, too. All I had left was Chansey. Honestly, not a terrible matchup. However, Lance was playing dirty. He just kept spamming Fire Spin, which causes me to not be able to move. It took ages, but I finally got free when it missed and killed it with Ice Beam. All that was left was Dragonair, and Lance was just being a big loser, dude. He spammed Rap, like the entire battle. I didn't get one single move in. Nothing I could do here, and I lost, just like that, all the way back to the beginning. It took a few more attempts to get back to where I was. I decided to swap in Electabuzz for Rhydon because it knew both Thunder Wave and Thunder Punch. Very solid combo. This time around Jolteon didn't miss with Thunder so I decided to use Toxic on the Dragonair. Lance swapped to Aerodactyl and took down Jolteon with Hyper Beam. So I sent out Electabuzz. Should be easy because I'm super effective. Well, Aerodactyl's crit on Hyper Beam had other plans. Thankfully, Haunter was my last Pokemon and took it down. Dragonair was still there, but if Lance wanted to spam Rap, it was poisoned. And it can't do that anyway because Haunter's a ghost type. So I had outsmarted Lance and made it to the rival fight. This fight started with his Exeggutor against my Nidoking. Absolutely awful match, so I swapped to Chansey since it knows Ice Beam. This was not good though, because I was hit with both Leech Seed and Toxic. Apparently in Gen 1, that damage like stacks up and it healed Exeggutor so much. There was basically nothing I could do, so I sent in Nidoking and hoped for the best. There was one hope though. Horn Drill is a one hit KO with a low chance of hitting and hit. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, dude, it actually hit. I tried the same thing again with Slowbro, but no such luck. All I had left was Gyarados, and this wasn't a good matchup for either of us. I got a lucky crit, managed to take it down, so there was a small chance we could win this. If I could just take down his last Pokemon, and it's Rapidash. Good for me. Oh wait, it's way faster and I just got one shot. Rip dude, all the way back to the start of the Elite Four. The next time I made it there, he sent out Electabuzz against my Nidoking. Absolutely perfect matchup and I one shot it. Next came Penser, who's kinda bad for me here. It used Sword Dance twice, which made it insanely strong, and it took me out with Hyper Beam. I sent out Gyarados, and it got one shot with Hyper Beam as well. This is not good. Luckily for me, Jolteon took it out with any damage, and it became a 1v1. My Jolteon against his Clefable. It's honestly an even matchup for both of us. Jolteon was being real cheeky, missing Thunder twice in a row. Like, not cool, dude. Finally, though, on the third one, it hit with a crit and paralyzed. I guess that's a fair trade. Clefable killed itself with Double Edge, and the announcer was hype as heck. Oh my god. Double Edge! A savage hit! Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what would have happened. I don't know what would have happened. It shows a cutscene showing all your Pokemon used in the final battle, then gives us a Pokemon present. We get a free Eevee. Wow, what a great deal for doing all that. But yeah, that's the Gym Leader Castle beaten. Now on to the Stadium Cups. Within the stadium, there are four cups to take part in. The Pokey Cup, Petite Cup, Prime Cup, and the Pika Cup. First one I went for was the Pika Cup. In this one, all Pokemon are level 15, so there's some serious strategy required. Like, you know how Jolteon was a core in my lineup, and it's not available here. The team I decided to run with was Starmie, Ghastly, Nidoking, Raichu, Exeggutor, and Gyarados. Not sure how level 15 of some of these are available, but hey, I'll take it. So in these cups, it's just like we did previously in Pocket Monster Stadium. There's eight trainers we have to beat all in a row. But this game's a bit more forgiving in that if you beat a trainer without losing any Pokemon, you gain a continue. That gives you a bit of breathing room rather than having to be perfect the entire time. Skipping ahead, the main trouble here was the seventh trainer. It had a level 20 Tentacruel because this competition's rigged and the level range is actually 15 to 20, but all mine are only 15. It knew both Toxic and Rap, a purely evil combo. The only play I had was to keep swapping between my Starmie and Gyarados, because if I didn't, they would just get killed slowly by poison. It was the slowest, most boring battle ever, but Tentacruel did eventually miss. 
twice in a row. That was all I needed to take it down. Then they had an Arcanine, which Gyarados made quick work of. The last trainer, honestly, it was a pushover, and that was it. Pika Cup down. Next, I went for the Petite Cup, which has a level range of 25 to 30. Although, of course, all mine are 25 because rental Pokemon bad. In this one, you can only use Pokemon that are able to evolve, and you have to use their first evolution. So, for example, Abra's available, but not Kadabra or Alakazam. For my team, I went with Pikachu, Ghastly, Dratini, Horsey, Diglett, and Spearow. Kind of a weird team, but it should be good. This one went really well as well, up until the seventh trainer. What is it with these seventh trainers, man? It started with my Ghastly against their Jigglypuff. Pretty in my favor, I thought. Well, in classic rigged Pokemon Stadium fashion, Jigglypuff used Blizzard, which froze me. In Gen 1, if you get frozen, there's literally no way out other than using an item on yourself. In Pokemon Stadium, you can't use items, so yeah. There wasn't much I could do with this, just bad RNG. Thankfully, though, we had continues from winning earlier matches. The next time around, my Ghastly was doing work. If I just didn't get frozen, this was an easy win. The final trainer once again was super easy. Ghastly beat all of his Pokemon without taking any damage. Kind of broken for this league, but yeah, that was two of the cups down. Next was the Poke Cup. This one actually had four sub cups under it. Pokey, Great, Ultra, and Master Ball cups. They all get progressively more difficult as you go further in, so I'll only talk about the Master Ball cup. The rules in this one are the exact same as they were in Pocket Monster Stadium, with the Pokemon being level 50 to 55. However, the other trainers won't be using super meta Pokemon like they did in that one. I varied up the team slightly here. Went with Starmie, Jolteon, Jinx, Exeggutor, Haunter, and Dugtrio. Nitto King was mostly good for Earthquake, but it was kind of slow, so Dugtrio's way faster and it knows Dig. Then Jinx is a solid Pokemon in general, but it helps a lot against dragons. First hurdle was the second trainer, believe it or not. They had an Electrode with Thunder Wave, and Electrode is the fastest Pokemon in the entire game, so I would always get paralyzed right away. I was barely able to take it down with Jinx, but then Zapdos took Jinx down without any damage. Then Zapdos also knew Thunder Wave, so Haunter got wrecked by Paralysis here. Doug Trio managed to take it out with Hyper Beam, but their other Pokemon was Venusaur. Not a good matchup for me. Yeah, Doug Trio got wrecked. Rip. Next try, it was my Haunter against their Tangela. Not a bad matchup for me, although they paralyzed me again. It's so annoying that the AI's just programmed to literally always paralyze you. I took down Tangela and then Haunter was able to use Explosion to take a lot of Exeggutor's health. Jinx finished the job, then Electrode came out, and of course it paralyzed me. It took down Jinx, so thankfully I had Doug Trio left. Should be a great matchup for me. But apparently, this Electrode knows Hyper Beam, and Thank god it didn't kill me in one hit. I easily took it down with Dig, and that was it. Trainer 4 was insane. Both of us started with Starmie, but theirs was faster than me because this game's rigged. I decided to swap to Exeggutor after we both hit with Thunder and Starmie tried to cheese by spamming Double Team, but no such luck for them. Then Omastar came out, an amazing matchup for me. Well, it should have been. One Double Team calls me to miss all of my attacks, and Exeggutor was out, just like that. All I had left was a super weak Starmie and Jolteon, so I sent out Jolteon. Then they swapped to Rhydon, a miserable matchup for me. My only hope was to spam Sand Attack and hope I could get it to keep missing. Unlucky though, and I got killed with Dig. All I had left was Starmie, who destroys Rhydon, but they swapped to Omastar. I wasn't able to kill it with Thunder, and I only had 30 HP to survive its Ice Beam. Luck was on my side though, I got a low damage roll and lived. We took down Omastar, then Rhydon was all that was left. Surf is four times super effective against it, so it had no chance. <laughs> I can't believe I won that one. Next problem was Trainer 6. I only had two continues at this point and they had beaten me twice to take both of them. It was all or nothing here. It started with my Haunter against their Snorlax. Not so great for me honestly. However, I got a lucky critical hit with Psychic, so I took it down without dying. But then Arcanine took me out in one hit, so I sent in Doug Trio. I used Dig and I was faster, so I went first. Arcanine continued to use Hyper Beam. Good for us, the devs fixed Hyper Beam in this game, so they must recharge, even if they miss, unlike Pocket Monster Stadium. 
I killed it without taking any damage. Then out came Tauros, and the exact same strat worked. It kept using Hyper Beam, and I kept using Dig. Easy win this time around. I did win that one, but I didn't have any continues left, so I just went into Trainer 7 planning to try my best. It started with Jinx versus their Alakazam. Not a great match, so I sent in Starmie. I got miserable luck here though, as both times it used Psychic it dropped my special, and the second one crit too. Starmie never had a chance. I sent in Jolteon Neck to once again got hit with a crit by Alakazam. Dude, the game's rigged, I'm telling you. Then they sent out Charizard, a great matchup for me. Thunder just barely didn't do enough damage, and I was already so weak from Alakazam, so rip Jolteon. All I had left was Jinx, kinda horrible matchup here, and yeah, Charizard killed us in one hit. All the way back to Trainer 1, dude. I decided to put Nidoking back in instead of Doug Trio, as well as Chansey instead of Exeggutor. And then I made my way back to Trainer 7 once again. It started with my Chansey versus their Starmie. I started by just spamming Minimize to increase my evasiveness to where it's hard for them to hit. Unlucky for me, the game didn't care and they hit just about every time. Even after they swapped in Exeggutor. I got hit with Leech Seed so I sent in Jinx who easily took it down. Then Kadabra came out and one shot Jinx. So I sent Chansey back in who did decent work but it was taken down. If you swap out Pokemon, all the stat changes you had get reset. So then I sent in Jolteon and couldn't finish it off, and of course, Kadabra knows rest, so back to full health it goes. I just kept spamming Thunder and eventually got a crit, which took Kadabra down. Now 1 vs 1. Out came Starmie, an amazing matchup for me. Jolteon one-shot it, and that was it. One trainer to go. The final trainer had a stacked lineup, like, where's he getting these legendaries from? And oh my god, he's even got Tass on his team. That guy has a world record in like every speedrun ever. We're screwed. I had two continues though, so it wasn't impossible. The first run I got absolutely wrecked, but I used that kind of a way to scout out how he would play. The second match started with my Jolteon against his. Not great, honestly. I went with Toxic and it went with Thunder Wave. Being paralyzed sucks. They swapped the Lapras and I had enough damage to two-shot it, but I got hit with Paralysis. Unlucky. I sent in Starmie who couldn't kill it with Thunder, then Lapras put us to sleep. So I sent in Jinx. She finished off Lapras, then they sent out Moltres. My best play here is Ice Punch, and I actually got really lucky because I froze it. No clue how a bird that's literally on fire gets frozen, but hey, I'll take it. But then that Jolteon from before came back out and one-shot Jinx, and then beat Starring easily because it was still asleep. Rip. Now it was my last chance. I started with Jolteon against Dragonite. Not the greatest, so I sent in Jinx. It immediately paralyzed me, then it missed its first attack, and I was hit with Paralysis. Then they swapped to Articuno, and I got a lucky crit on it. I decided to swap back to Jolteon, and thankfully it used Sky Attack, which means no damage to Jolteon. I got a one-shot with the rest of its HP, then out came their Jolteon. I knew what to do this time, and I sent in Nidoking. Can't paralyze this guy. Earthquake took it down in one shot, and all he had left was Dragonite. Nidoking was worthless here, but I didn't want to swap out and lose a turn. You'll be remembered, dude. I sent in Jolteon, who slowly chipped away its HP until finally Dragonite fell and I had won the Poke Master Ball Cup. That was rough. All that was left was the Prime Cup, which also has four sub cups within it. In this cup, all Pokemon are available except Mew and Mewtwo, and they're all level 100. True powerhouses here. The only challenging one is the final one, so skip ahead to that. I mostly kept the same team with Nidoking, Starmie, Jolteon, Haunter, and Jinx, but I used Graveler instead of Chansey. It just had such good moves. Believe it or not, it was actually really smooth sailing all the way to Trainer 7. I basically had no trouble up till there. It started with my Nidoking versus their Lapras. Miserable matchup for me, but luck was on my side. Nidoking wrecked Lapras in one hit with Horn Drill. Then out came Alakazam, who I could kill, but nah, it one-shot me. Then I sent out Jinx, who isn't the greatest here, honestly. I got lucky by paralyzing it with Body Slam, but it wasn't enough. Then I only had Haunter left, who gets destroyed in this matchup. One continue down. The next time I sent out Jinx against their Lapras, we were going back and forth, you know, hitting each other a bit. Neither one really had a huge advantage here. After a few turns, they sent out Alakazam, who I put to sleep with Lovely Kiss. 
then I sent in Nidoking to destroy this guy. I deal a ton of damage, but it's only safe because it's asleep. Nidoking wrecked this dude, then Lapras came back out, so I sent in Jolteon. It absolutely melted the Lapras, then out came... Ditto? This is just an awful Pokemon. I have no idea why he used it. Jolteon killed it in one hit, and that was it. One trainer to go. So somehow this guy has a Mew? Like, I'm not allowed to have that. Why can he? Well, if I purchased the Game Boy games and imported it, I could, I guess, but we don't have that luxury. The battle started with my Graveler versus his Cloyster. Miserable, so I swapped in Jolteon. Of course, I got hit with a crit, and then they swapped a Rhydon, direct counter to me, so I had to swap, I sent in Starmie. And of course, the extremely slow Rhydon crit with Earthquake. Rip. My team got wrecked, on to the second attempt. Next time, I sent out Jinx against his Electrode. I was paralyzed, which really sucks, but then I was later able to put it to sleep. I swapped the Nitto King and took it down in one hit, but then out came that Mew I knew would come eventually. This thing's insanely strong, it's so unfair that he has it. Nitto King did little damage, so I sent in Starmie. Mew paralyzed me, but Starmie was actually doing pretty well. It took down Mew, but there was low HP left. The last Pokemon they had was Snorlax, who just absolutely annihilated Starmie and Jinx. It wasn't looking too good. This time I started with Jinx against their Electrode again. I knew it would use Thunder Wave, so I swapped to Nidoking, making it worthless. They swapped to Mew, and I got some decent damage off. Then I sent in Starmie, followed by Jinx. Jinx thankfully put it to sleep with Lovely Kiss, even though it was paralyzed. With it asleep, I was safe to send in Nidoking, but they swapped to Snorlax. There was no way I could beat this thing fairly, so I just started spamming Horn Drill and hoping for the best. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Let's go! There's my 1 in 3 chance. That was exactly what I needed. Mew didn't stand a chance since it was asleep and Electrode can't damage Nidoking. It was smooth sailing from there, the final trainer down. Thank goodness. For beating these cups, you unlock the Dodrio Game Boy, which lets you play Game Boy Pokemon games at triple speed. It was actually really awesome to have this back in the day. Then the sky turns dark and you can see Mewtwo flying in the background. We go to fight it in a 6 versus 1 battle. <laughs> Honestly, it's really unfair for Mewtwo, but hey, I'm not complaining. I had a pretty unorthodox team for this one. Electrode, Nidoking, Rhydon, Rhyhorn, Nidorino, and Nidoran. The plan was simple. Send in Electrode to use Thunder Wave and Paralyze. Then send in someone else and just spam Horn Drill or Fissure until one of them eventually hits. Turns out it only took one try as Rhyhorn killed it with Fissure on the very first hit. I guess this battle's supposed to be difficult, but this lineup makes it completely free. Once you beat Mewtwo, the game cuts to the credits, and that's it. Game complete. Aw, oh, come on, did you really think I wouldn't talk about the best part of the entire game? The mini-games, of course. Man, I spent so many hours playing these in both Stadium 1 and 2. I think everyone's glad the games included these because they would have seen way less play without them in my opinion. I didn't have to do these to beat the game, but come on, they're so fun. First up was Clefairy Says. The teacher Clefairy gives you a string of directional inputs and you just memorize them and enter them. And when they're showing you the moves each turn, it just plays the best song ever with them all going, Fairy! Dude, I love that song. It's a banger. Then came Snore War, where a group of drowsies are staring at this metronome for some reason. It's just an exercise in rhythm and timing where you press A when the metronome crosses the middle. Last one to fall asleep wins. Then of course there's Dig 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 where you alternate pressing L and R as fast as possible. I used to destroy people in this because I can alternate mash really well. I'm not that great at mashing a single button, but alternating between two of them, I'm great at it. And I did destroy the computer in this. And who could forget Rock Harden, where you control either a Kakuna or Metapod and dodge this barrage of boulders being launched towards you. Who's launching these boulders? Why are they doing it? Don't they know it's dangerous? The idea here is to press A to Harden and avoid getting hit, but you can only use Harden for so long before you faint. So the best way to do it is tap the button right before the boulder hits you. Somehow I managed to get a draw here, which I've only seen in a task of these games. It was pretty weird. Next was Run Rattata Run. This is just a button mashing minigame where you also have to jump over hurdles. Pretty standard, but it's still fun. 
Then came Ekans Hoop Hurl. This one was so hard for me. You pull the joystick back to launch yourself towards the diglets that come up. I don't know, I just struggle so much at this one. I usually can't beat the computer in it, but it's really fun playing with your friends. After that was, in my opinion, the best minigame, Magikarp Splash. This one you just hold the A button to have Magikarp flop up and hit a switch over and over. They're all making these super derpy noises the whole time and it's, it's just hilarious. But this one's also really fun to optimize because if you let go of A just as you hit it you fall faster. I always like this one the best. Then was Thundering Dynamo where Voltorb and Pikachu try to charge up some random machine. You just mash either A or B depending on what color the light is, but in mashing it's eh. Finally there was Sushi Go Round. This one's awesome too because you all control Lickitungs and you just eat a bunch of sushi spinning around. You can build up combos by eating the same one over and over. My favorite part of this is where Lickitung eats something spicy and he's, he just freaks out. And then there's the announcer guy screaming the names of sushi in Japanese, but I have no clue what he's saying. And yeah, that's all the mini games there are. Really hope these end up on the Nintendo Switch Online so I can play them with friends. Alright, there you have it, my journey to beating Pokemon Stadium. It's a classic that many of you probably owned and it deserves its popularity. The battle animations still hold up today as being very well done. It's great that you can play your Game Boy games on it at a faster speed and you can import your Pokemon from them to the N64. The game's pretty unfair if you don't do that because the rental Pokemon just aren't all that great, but I guess they wanted people to buy their games. Plus this has the mini games, which gives it so much replayability for multiplayer. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10 for enjoyability because playing this by yourself gets super repetitive, but it's still not a bad time. And a 7 out of 10 for difficulty because some of these fights are just so tough. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, thanks for watching, and here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. So we have 342 games on the list. Anything, it could be anything. Could even be Zor Maju Sukai Densetsu, but it probably won't be. Three, two, one. 48, what is that? Oh man. <laughs> we are playing the next Castlevania game, which is Castlevania 64.